The screws. Hey, Tom Thomas, what you thinking about? Huh? For school, I have to write an essay. My very best friend. I don't know, who should I write about? What do you mean, who? Aren't I your closest friend? Of course. How could I forget to write about you? And you can keep forgetting. That's our secret, right? Don't you remember the promise you made when we met? <sighs> sure, how could I forget? What's wrong with Chusaka today? Chusaka, why are these screws bothering you so badly? What's with you? Leave them alone already. Will you just calm down? You're gonna destroy my plane. Let's get out of here. Ow! What's going on? <gasps> What's going on? Hey, if you don't turn back again, I'm not letting you go. Oh, please, don't be afraid. I'm not gonna hurt you two. I'll just ask you one question and let you go. <sighs> Nolik, we can't. Don't worry about it. Quit your staring. Ask your question, boy. No way you can talk. Just, just, just tell me, who are you? Fixies. That's all. We answered. Now you let us out. Oh, wait. But what's it mean that you're fixies? That's already question number two. You promised to let us out, didn't you? I'm sorry. You can leave now. Zemka, it's fine. I can see from his look that we can trust him. Uh, all right. We'll tell him. You gotta swear that you don't tell anyone else. I swear it. Fixies. We're the little people that live inside of machines and appliances and take care of them. Fixing them, cleaning them, and oiling them. Humans never suspect us. They think that if something breaks and then suddenly starts working again, that it happened all by itself. Well, nothing happens by itself. It happens because we, the Fixies, are living inside. Yes, without the Fixies, humans would have so many more problems with their machines. That's awesome. And so what are your names? That's already question number three. You can call me Nolik, and her name is Simka. And my name's Tom Thomas. Will you come back over? Oh, well. Uh, I was this close to becoming the first kid in the whole world to make friends with the Fixies. I thought you guys would never come back over. And we didn't plan on coming back. But then we thought it'd be really great to be the only Fixies in the whole world, who are friends with the only kid in the whole world, who is friends with the Fixies. Ah! And who has told no one about us. The Fixies do everything they can do to hide from humans. They are afraid that if humans discovered Fixies, they would hunt them down and capture them and start keeping them in cages just like pets. And worse than that, they would take them into their laboratories and start examining them under microscopes, even conducting scientific experiments on them. Or suppose that humans thought we'd do all their work for them, and so they decided that they didn't have to take care of their appliances any longer. Well then, let me tell you this. If humans decided that they didn't have to clean or fix their own appliances, then not even the Fixies will be able to stop them from breaking no matter what they do. That's why the Fixies are very smart to hide from humans. Okay, then, I'll write about someone else. I have the very best friend ever. Period. 
When something's broken, he repairs it. He's the one and only Noel. The one and only Nolan. The Mixer. Masia, why are we going to the dishwasher again? We have a busy day ahead of us, and we all need to be charged up with energy. I don't like charging myself up in the dishwasher. Then how about the microwave, Nolik? Or the kettle? No thanks! I don't like it when we go inside anything at all in that kitchen. There's not one interesting thing in there. And where's it interesting, huh? In the computer! Masia, will you let me get charged up in the computer? The energy there is sweeter. Our diet has to be nutritious, Nolik, not just delicious. People don't eat just candy, do they? Humans get energy from food, while the Fixies get their energy from appliances. Humans eat all sorts of foods, and so do Fixies. They need the energy that comes from different devices. Getting charged up in a car makes a Fixie faster. In a computer, smarter. And in a clock, more accurate. To get a balanced energy diet, Fixies mustn't stay inside of one place all the time like a television. It's healthier for us to move from one device to another. Good morning, Tom Thomas. <sighs> What's the matter? For breakfast, I got cereal with milk. Mom says that milk is so healthy, but I think it's just awful. Aha, uh -huh, Nolik, there you are. Go get charged right now. I'm not going. Look at Tom Thomas. He doesn't want to have breakfast either. Why don't you? Milk tastes awful to him. Tastes awful? He just doesn't know how to drink it right. Look what we've got here. What? What? A mixer. A mixer is a kitchen appliance that's used to mix together different foods. With a mixer, you can make things like frosting, sauces, or an omelet. But the most delicious thing you can make with a mixer is a milkshake. It's easy. Just put some fruit, syrup, juice, ice cream, or anything else you'd like into a container and then add milk. Now use the mixer to stir it all up until it's smooth and creamy. And that's it. You've got yourself a milkshake. Guys, what do we have for a milkshake? We've got a jar of jelly. Will it work? That'll work. And strawberry jam? That'll be great. Here's a banana. I found some chocolate, too! And I found strawberry ice cream. Start up the mixer. When you get up from your bed, e yo When you get up from your bed, open your favorite cereal. Oh, when your day is ahead, open your favorite cereal. Make one more shake, just one. They were good. Sure, if you want to. Oh, where did all the milk go? Way to go. Looks like you drank all of it. And I remember when you said how milk is awful. I didn't know how to drink it right. Simka. 
Nina, what in the world were you up to? And what happened to Nolik? Shh. Just come, I'll show you. Nolik, here you are. Didn't you say that charging up in the kitchen is boring for you? The mixer's not boring. It gives you energy that's yummy, delicious, and nutritious. The microphone. And what do you think? Should we go and see a movie? <sighs> movie! <sighs> hey, you didn't type everything that I said. You should listen more carefully. And you should try using less words. <gasps> Nolik, hey. Aliyah, what are you arguing about? Uh, well, I was writing a letter to Johnny. I was, not you. I messed up my finger and Nolik offered to help me. I had no idea that you're such a yapper. Oh. Now I see. Tom Thomas. <laughs> Didn't you know that you can call Johnny straight from your computer? You sure? You see that picture of the phone? Just click on it. Hi. So what movie do you want to go see? Hey there. I don't care. Just not pirates and those robots. Hey, Tom Thomas, why aren't you answering me? I am answering you. Hello? Hello? Talking to the microphone. Uh, I don't have a microphone. There you go. End of conversation. All right, then talk right into there. Simka, come on. You use headphones to listen. It's a joke. It's no joke. We talk into microphones and listen through headphones. But both of these devices use a special membrane to do their job. The membrane inside of a microphone is used to capture sound that is then sent through wires as an electrical signal. And inside a pair of headphones, a membrane helps turn that electrical signal back into sound. So it turns out that a microphone and headphones are built in a very similar way, even though they are used quite differently. And so, I talk right into here? Johnny, hello? Just wait a second. First, we need to plug your headphones into the hole where the microphone gets plugged in. Ah, I get it. Go ahead. Now it's a microphone. Johnny, I'm here. Can you hear? Yeah, he can hear, but you can't. Nolik, switch it over to the headphone jack. I already saw a robot. And I already saw it. No lick! I don't think there's anyone who didn't see it. You didn't see it? Then let's go see it. No, I don't wanna. I think the robots will be even more boring than the pirates. Do you wanna see the pirates? Make up your mind. Do you want to see the pirates or the robots? I don't want to see either one. Nolik, what are you doing? What am I doing? It's because you and Johnny don't listen to each other. I've got a good idea. You need to talk like police on their walkie-talkies. When they're done talking and they're ready for an answer, they say, over. Great idea. When we talk to someone using the telephone, there are two channels for the sound. We talk through the first channel and listen to the other person talking through the second one. But sometimes two people need to talk to each other using only one channel. For instance, sailors and taxi drivers use one channel radio sets. When a radio set's turned on, you can hear the other person talking, but they can't hear you talk unless you push a special button down. Then they'll hear you, but you won't hear them. So that means you have to take turns talking, because if everybody tries talking at once, nobody will understand anything. So then, to let people know that you're done talking and you're ready to listen to what they have to say, say over. Johnny, hello. Why don't we try talking like police on their walkie-talkies? Whenever you're done talking, say to me, over, over. All right, so are we going to the movies? Over. Nah, I don't feel like it. 
Why don't we go play ball instead? Over. Sounds good. Who were you talking to before? Over. Uh... Uh... I can't tell you that. It's classified. And we policemen, we follow the rules. Wow, that worked out great. You two are the best. Over. Oops. <laughs> we try our best. Over. We do. Especially me. <sighs> I'm completely over. The internet. Well, maybe it's a... Uh... Don't think so. It's probably a... Uh... You call for me, children? What's the matter? Take a look. I've never seen anything like it. What in the world could it be? Hit. Maybe it's a bathroom scale? Or a clock with a digital display. Wait a sec. Are there instructions around here for this thing? I couldn't find them anywhere. That's a problem. Well, then let's try to figure it out. What are you trying to figure out up there? What a huge hockey puck. It's big enough for a monster. <laughs> and the name is so silly. T-Robot. <laughs> Why don't they just call it the troll butt? Or I got it, the troll boat. <laughs> Please, stop the racket. So what could this thing do, huh? I have no idea. We could try finding it on the internet. Where? Just run along, you two. We don't need any internets. We can handle this. Go on, go. Don't interrupt us. Sure, whatever you say. Come, Nolik. We'll find it out by ourselves. Yeah. Uh, how? So, you remember what it was called? Uh-huh. Uh, a troll boat. Nah. A troll bot. You're right. Hop to it. Robotic vacuum cleaner. You mean it vacuums by itself? It's a robot, so yeah. Class, there's just so much cool stuff in this computer. No, look, this information is not on this computer. It's on the internet. From your computer, you can send a letter to another computer. You can also download a song or a photo from another computer. That's all possible because most of the computers in the world are connected to one another as part of a huge web. And this World Wide Web is what we call the Internet. Thanks to the Internet, we can take a peek at just about anywhere in the world and find information we need about anything. It's an electronic vegetable slicer. No, it's a printer for round sheets of paper. There's no way. Grandpus, we found out what they do with it. You're back again? You, you mustn't, mustn't interrupt, interrupt the adult. Just wait a second. Nolik, turn it on. Uh, turn what on? Don't you turn on anything. Ready, Ready set, jump! jump. What is that? It's a robotic vacuum cleaner. It runs itself. And where did you find the instructions for it? On the internet. Just ask and it tells you. You can really just ask and it tells you? Uh-huh. If you want, we can show you. We'd love to see it. Sure, why not? Yep. Whoa! <laughs> hmm, on the internet. Hey, 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 wait for me. What's an elephant way? What's an elephant way? What's an elephant way? The answer's easy to get. It says it weighs five tons. It says it weighs five tons. It says it weighs five tons here on the internet. It says it weighs five tons. It says it weighs five tons. It says it weighs five tons here on the internet. You send a letter to me. I send a letter to you. You send a letter to me. It 
That's all. You've had enough monsters. It's not good to watch these kinds of movies before bed. Mom, Mom, really, I'm not scared. Let me watch the end, would you? I told you, that's all. Well, good night, honey. I feel them. <sighs> Can you believe it? He's sleeping, and he didn't turn the light off. Yeah, and so? And so, if every human went to sleep with a light on, there wouldn't be enough electricity to go around. Hup! Everyone can probably remember walking into an empty room with the lights turned on. Or finding a TV on that nobody's watching. One little light or TV might not seem like much, but just imagine how many people are living on this Earth. Well, if everybody forgot to turn off the lights or TV when they weren't being used, the amount of wasted electricity would equal the amount of energy produced by a hundred power plants. And each of these power plants needs freight cars of coal or rivers of oil to keep running. And all that fuel has to be extracted and burned constantly. Now do you see how expensive burning a light bulb is for the Earth? So don't forget to turn off electrical appliances when you're not using them. It's so easy. Uh, who turned off the light? I feel them. I feel them. I feel them. I... Look! What's up with him? I think he's playing sleep hockey. Looks like his position is left out. Ha ha. Anyway, he should get a penalty for wasting electricity. <gasps> Monsters! <laughs> hey, what do you think we are? Hockey pucks? Nolik, Simka, forgive me. Who did you think we were? Mm, monsters. Huh. Well, I see how you could mistake Simka for one, but obviously not me. <laughs> Tom Thomas, what are you doing? Why are you sleeping with the light on? I was so dumb. I watched this monster movie on TV before bed. Now I'm scared to sleep without the light on. And that dumb old monster flick, why were you watching it? I felt like getting scared. Ah! You're great at getting scared. Keep quiet, or we'll wake up your mom and dad. How am I gonna fall asleep now? Here's a good idea. You can use a nightlight. A nightlight is a little light that humans who don't like to sleep in the dark use in their rooms. The nightlight has a dim glow. That's because it works with a special kind of light bulb that uses very little electricity. These kinds of light bulbs are called energy efficient. <laughs> That's hard to say. <laughs> and you can find night lights that use such low energy bulbs that they can work off of a battery. 
But you know there isn't a night light here. Huh. How would you get by without us? Tonight, I'm here to help you. I'm gonna be your night light. Look, right there. There's our lampshade. Thanks so much. You really are a friend indeed, Nolik. It was easy. Just go to sleep. Nolik, <sighs> do you know any good stories? I know one about a big meat grinder. Nah, no way. You'd better tell me a story about a nice kind fixie. Ah, I know a good one. And here's how it goes. Grandpoos was working inside of a very big clock. Actually, the clock wasn't that big. And I'm not sure if it was Grandpoos, but it was a clock, I think. The scale. <laughs> Chusaka, that's enough already. But what if it's something important? Come on, she's just a dog. They say that cats and dogs have a sixth sense that we don't have. What's that? Well, they feel all sorts of things that we humans don't. I better let her in. <laughs> Mom and I will be home before dinner. Please remember to give Chusaka her food. Love, Dad. Oh, how could I have forgotten this? I just can't believe it. You believe in a sixth sense now, don't you? Uh-huh. Only it looks like for Chusaka, it's a sense of hunger. How much food should I give her? Look, it's all written on that chart. For each kilogram of the dog's weight, serve one level scoop at every feeding. Uh-huh, I got it. How many scoops is Chusaka? Oops, I mean, how many kilograms? I don't know. Then what should we do? You don't know? We'll weigh Chusaka, that's what we'll do. With what? With a scale. There's one standing in your dad's office. You're right, let's go. I was wondering, does it bother your mom that only your dad has his own office and not her? Nah, mom says she's got her own office. It's called the kitchen. Hey, look, there's a scale. Did you know that humans have had scales like this for more than 7,000 years? If we want to find out how much something weighs, we need to compare it with something that we already know the weight of. Let's say you need to weigh a watermelon. You put it on the scales pan and it drops down. Now you keep adding weights to the other side until the two sides balance. Well, this one is too heavy, but this one is just right. Since the weight is 10 kilograms, it means that the watermelon weighs 10 kilos. And that's just how simply a scale works. Well, should we start? Chusaka. Right, like she's gonna come running. How are you gonna get her away from that bag? Huh, I know how to get her. Here, hold this little piece of food while I weigh her. This may be little, but it's way too heavy. Just hang on. Please, hurry up! Come on! Hurry up! Done. Her weight is two kilograms. Okay, now we can feed Chusaka. Chusaka weighs two kilograms, so two cups will be just right then. Do you think that you can feed your pets any kind of food at all? Oh no! For them to be healthy, pets just like humans need to have a nutritious diet. Today, there are special pet foods for birds, fish, dogs, cats, and all sorts of other pets. 
These foods are made with everything your pets need to stay healthy, like meat, fish, fruits, grains, vegetables, and vitamins. These kinds of foods give pets a well-balanced diet, and there's no need to cook them. They're ready to eat. Just pour them in a bowl and your dog will be happy. And so will your cat, and your bird, and your fish, too. Just be careful not to mix them up, because what's good for a fish isn't good for a dog. Each animal needs its own special food. Stop! What's wrong? What's wrong? You have to take out a piece. She ate one already. Hmm. All right. So, that sixth sense. You still think it's true, right? What did you bring that for? Oh, Mom is calling. No way! How could she know it would rain? I knew that Chusaka had it. Hello? It was a sixth sense, wasn't it? Paper. Hey, Tom Thomas! You're watering plants? Not only. I'm writing an essay for school. I don't get it. I have to write an essay that's called How I Take Care of Nature. Only I have to write what's true, so I'm writing what's true. Watering my plants. <laughs> oh! Chusaka! Chusaka, come here, girl. Stop! Don't be scared. Why did you pick her up? I want to pet her a little so I can write about how well I take care of animals. Tom Thomas, I want to take care of nature too. That sounds good. And what should we be doing? We could try saving air by not breathing as often. Awesome idea! Way to go! Saving air! Let's go for it! And ready? <gasps> Humans invade nature and destroy more and more of her riches with each passing year. They extract her minerals and oil, cut down her trees, and pollute her air and water. They do all of this to produce food and all sorts of other things. It's a shame that people don't really need all these things that they produce. They often buy something and then just toss it away when it's still almost new. And then there's all the food that humans buy and just throw away. So if you want to help nature, try not to buy anything that you really don't need. And take good care of the things that you do buy. And you can be sure that we Fixies will do everything we can to make your things last as long as possible. <sighs> That's it. Now we can write it. Uh-huh. Write this. I also do my duty by saving air. A whole 20 seconds worth. You got it? What's that noise? Huh. I must have left it running when I needed some water for my plants. Tom Thomas, I think you should write that you're saving water, too. It really matters, because there's not enough of it. Nolik, that's a good idea. Let's add that. Hi there. What are you guys up to? We're writing about how Tom Thomas protects nature. It's a homework assignment for school. Uh-huh. I've already written how I'm watering the plants, I'm good to living creatures, how I'm saving air and water, and how I'm conserving carrots, too. I never want to eat them, especially in soup. Not eating your vegetables? No way. Doesn't count. You sure of that? Mm-hmm. Why did 
need to rip your paper out. You won't let me say how I'm conserving carrots, right? So I'll have to rewrite it. Ah, uh, you're not taking care of nature. What? Where'd you get that idea from? That's all I'm doing. No. When you keep on throwing your paper out, it means you're not taking care of trees out there. What trees are you talking about? Didn't you know humans make paper out of trees? Humans make paper by cutting down trees and shredding the pieces into chips. The chips are then placed in water, chemicals are added to the solution, and then it is all mixed together into a mushy, watery substance called pulp. Next, the water is drained from the pulp and with the help of huge rotating drums is flattened into thin sheets of paper. So you see, to make new paper, humans have to keep cutting down trees. And you should know this. If every person on the planet would use one less sheet of paper, you know, they'd save a million trees all together. You sure? I'm sure. And now that you know about trees and paper, what are you gonna do next? Hey, you know, I've decided not to write any essay for school. You, you what? I want to help save more trees by using less paper. That's all. Oh, Tom Thomas, you're my hero. Ah. The alarm. Hey there, I'm back. yoo -hoo! Wait, my chocolate bunny! It was standing right here! What's this, a dog? Not that one, another one! I had two bunnies. I just got them as a present. You had two bunnies? Are you sure of that? Of course! You think I don't know my ones from my twos? Huh. Then someone stole one. Unless, uh, unless... <gasps> you went and ate it yourself! Me? How come I don't remember anything about it? Maybe you're a sleepwalker. What is a sleepwalker? Someone who gets up from his bed at night without waking up. He crosses the room, eats one of his chocolate bunnies, and doesn't remember a thing in the morning. But in the morning, the bunny was still there. Yeah? Huh. How about... Your mother? Could she have taken it? She doesn't like when you're eating too much candy. No, she doesn't. She says that candy's terrible for my teeth. And so, to save your teeth from these sweets, she snuck quietly into your room, snatched one of the rabbits, and ate it. But Mom's the one who gave them to me as a present. And so why would she take it? Yeah? Then I just don't know. Well, I do. I think it was your father. He wouldn't steal it. We know he's allergic to chocolate. <laughs> Next, he'll tell us how the fish took it. You know, I always thought there was something fishy about those fish. No doubt about it. They stole the bunny. <laughs> uh-huh. And then they hid it in their aquarium. <laughs> oh, no, like that's funny. You know what, Tom Thomas? You need to protect that other chocolate hair. Exactly. It has to be eaten right away. Now, before it disappears. Just wait a little. You don't have to eat it. Let's think of something else. Of course. We need a security alarm. Need what? The alarm was invented to keep houses, cars, and other valuable things safe and secure. The simplest alarm is a siren or light bulb that is connected by wires to a door or window. When someone tries to open the door that has an alarm on it, the alarm goes off, making the siren howl and the light flash. Alarms can also be set up to call the police if they go off. Super! But where can we get ourselves a security alarm? You have an electronic construction kit, remember? You're right. Then bring it over here. Nolik, help me! Tiffish! 
is the Fixies Victory Call. When a job is well done and we Fixies are proud of our work, we exclaim, Tadish! and raise up our hand with our thumb and first two fingers sticking out. You want to know what it means? It's very simple. Fixies love solving problems and fixing things that are broken. And do you know what you need to do to solve a problem? First, you need to find out what's broken. Second, understand why it broke. And third, repair what's broken so it works again. So do what the Fixies do and first, Find it. Second, understand it. And third, fix it. Tadish! <laughs> it really is a great word. And it sounds funny. But we Fixies surely like it a lot. Well, Tom Thomas, turn on the alarm. You sure the alarm will work? I'm sure. Without a doubt. Under arrest! Freeze! Chusaka? Why are you stealing my chocolate? The tin can. Well, what else goes? A flashlight. It's good to have when you're camping. Listen, Tom Thomas, just leave a little room for me in there. I'm good to have when you're camping, too. I'll leave you some room. Just hide in there so Dad won't see you. And you can't tell Simka anything about me going with you. All right. And last on the list, a few cans of meat. Hi, Tom Thomas. Have you seen Nolik? No. Then who did I just hear you talking with? I, uh... I was just reading the label. Huh. Where did Nolik run off to? Simka, do you know... Um, how come these cans have no way to open them so you can taste what's inside? What do you mean? Don't you know what makes canned food special? It comes in a can. <laughs> about canned food is that it can get stored a long time without spoiling. You see, meat and vegetables spoil when harmful bacteria start multiplying inside of them. So, if you can get rid of the bad bacteria or stop them from getting into the food, the food will last a long time. That's why jars and cans are sealed very tightly. This stops harmful bacteria and air from getting inside and spoiling the food. Nolik's not here, right? Another can I should take with me. There's something fishy happening here. Hey, guys. My mom threw this can out a long time ago, but I hid it for later. I knew I'd use it someday. And who were you talking to when you said guys? Moi? Uh, you're here and I'm here, and that's two of us. Look at this great can I got. There's nothing great about it. Put it down on the floor. You see? What? Oh, it's crooked, and so what? So what? It's all swollen. And when it's like that, you know that inside the can, bad bacteria is growing and spoiling the food that's in there. It went bad? There's a way to check. On every single can, you can find the date it's good until. Sooner or later, even canned food will go bad. And of course, dairy foods like yogurt or milk can spoil in just a few days. 
When you buy food in the store, it's very important to always check the expiration date. The expiration date's the last day that it's safe to eat that food without worrying that it may have gone bad. You can find the expiration date on each box, jar, or can of food, so pay attention. And be very careful not to buy or eat any food after its expiration date has passed. And if you see that a can is swollen, throw it away immediately. If you eat it, your belly can swell up too. Unfortunately, when food spoils, it's impossible to unspoil it, and then even the fixies won't be able to help. Oh, my mom probably saw that this can went bad over a year ago. That's why she threw it into the trash. Right, shame on you for picking it out of there. You could have poisoned yourself and poisoned your dad as well. Yeah. And the other cans, are they swollen too? They're fine. Goodbye then. It's a shame I couldn't find Nolik around here. Papus wants to give him a brand new pack of mat as a present. To me? Aha, I gotcha. <laughs> I had a feeling you would try to sneak away in Tom Thomas's bag. You lied, that's not fair. And hiding, that's fair, right? Tom Thomas, are you ready? I'm ready. Great, then let's get going. Hooray, we're going camping. <sighs> I want to go camping too. Don't worry, I'll go camping with you. Really? Really, really, really. To that house outside our window. See how huge it is? The robot. Did I already tell you what I'm hoping you'll get me for my birthday present? <laughs> yes, honey. Only a thousand times or so. A Robotozoid R300 would just be the greatest. With Mega Vision, I want it. I really do. <sighs> I do. Well, tomorrow you'll find out. But now it's time to sleep, Tom Thomas. Wow, that is one great present. And we got Tom Thomas absolutely zero for his birthday. Ah, uh, we're just terrible friends. So, how does this robot work? Okay, so let's give this a try, shall we? First, we'll take a walk. And how does he have any idea where the robot's going? I can tell you. One of the robot's eyes is a video camera. The robot sends the picture to the screen on the controller so the player can see where the robot is going. Yeah! And that's just one thing they know how to do. A robot is a smart machine that can do very difficult or dangerous work for humans. With its strong metal arms, a robot can move heavy objects or put together parts to build cars and other machines. Robots are often sent into outer space or to the bottom of the ocean to help scientists. There are also robots that can understand what people are saying and robots that can talk and even make jokes, just like people. I've got it. Now let's turn you around. Uh, what was that? Uh, look, you know... <gasps> he destroyed him! No, let stop! You were playing with that, right? You think Tom will notice? Oh, I know what you're doing all night. I'm off to bed. I'll get him to work. I'll stay up until I do. Simka, let's try and... No, we're gonna need some help. Things right, we live to keep 
keep on working And work for us is fun So we'll just keep on working Cause our work's never done And deep inside of gadgets If you look when it's dark You might just see us race around Like multicolored sparks One, two, three Tanish! Inside will be Tanish! To fix what's wrong Tanish! Till it runs strong One, two, three Tanish! Inside will be Tanish! All day and night Tanish! We fix things right One, two, three Tanish! Inside will be Tanish! To fix what's wrong Tanish! Till it runs strong One, two, three Tanish! Inside will be Tanish! All day and night Tanish! We fix things right Wow! You got it! We need to hide. A robotazoid R300, I can't believe it. <sighs> well, happy birthday to you, Tom Thomas. I'm sorry, Tom Thomas. Last night, your robot, you know, I broke it. Dad, it works perfectly. Don't you see? I'm so proud of you. You fixed it. <laughs> Shh. I couldn't fix it at all. I tried everything. Oh, you want to tell me that the robot fixed itself? <laughs> what a joker. <laughs> Mom, Dad, thanks so much. I love it. And how about thanking us? I should have known it was you who fixed the robot. The thermos. Where should I put it? Put what, Tom Thomas? Oh, it's you. Uh, my ice cream. Are you joking? Eat it! I can't. Tom Thomas, are you all right? <laughs> I'm fine. It's just that it's a present for my mom. Today is Mother's Day. Then you need to go give it to her. I can't. Dad and I are going to congratulate her together. What's your dad gonna give her? I don't know. But when he gets back home, the ice cream will have melted. Then put it in the freezer. And what if Mom looks in there and finds it? The surprise will be ruined. <sighs> so where won't she find it? I'll tell you where. Inside of your dad's office. I don't see any place to hide it here. There's no freeze or anything. Why don't you take a look inside the box? Here's a thermos, but what good is it to me? Thermoses are for keeping things hot. The ice cream will melt in there. It will not. A thermos is made by putting one bottle inside of another. Between the bottles is an empty space, and that's the secret of a thermos. That space stops heat from getting out or in. So if there's hot tea inside, the empty space doesn't let the heat from the tea get out. And if there's ice cream in the thermos, the space stops the heat that's outside from getting in. And that's how a thermos keeps hot things hot and cold things cold. That's it. I'll go and play for a little while. He didn't even say thank you, did he, Nolik? Where are you? Nolik! I'm here! Where? In the thermos! What are you doing in there? I wanted to see that vacuum you talked about. Just don't touch anything. And don't even think of licking the foil. The ice cream's so cold, your tongue will stick to the metal. It's always stuck. What did you say? Winter is a wonderful time of year. 
holidays, presents, snowballs, skates, sleds. But the cold is also something serious that you shouldn't fool around with. The most important thing is to dress warmly. Cover your head with a hat and your throat with a scarf. Then there's less chance you'll catch a cold or get a sore throat. And to keep your hands from getting chapped, don't forget to wear gloves. And never walk around in wet shoes in the winter. That's a sure way to get yourself sick. And there's one more thing I want to tell you. It's great to have fun in the cold, but use your head. Don't eat snow or stick your tongue on metal fences, poles, or doorknobs. Your tongue can get stuck so strongly to the metal that it will be very hard to get off. I wish you all a glorious winter. Tom Thomas! Nolik's tongue got stuck! Where? In the thermos! Hurry! I'll explain everything later! Dad, you're already home? Mm-hmm. Dad, why are you taking my present? What do you mean, your present? I mean this one. Since when did it become yours? Oh, hi there. What's the fuss all about? Oh, it's nothing at all. I, uh, have a huh? surprise for you. I want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. A thermos? How wonderful. Thanks so much. <laughs> Is there something in here? I don't think so. <laughs> Inside, there's a present from me. Vanilla ice cream. My favorite. And how did that end up in there? <laughs> Thank you so much, my sweeties. No, like you got me so scared. Thank goodness you thought of turning into a screw inside of there. Uh-huh. Does your tongue hurt? Uh-huh. Do you think you can talk again? I can talk. Oh, that's good. We better hurry. We still need to go and wish our mother a happy Mother's Day. And you should, too. The Piggy Bank. Mwah. Tom Thomas, why are you throwing away your money? That's not what I'm doing. I'm storing it. This is a piggy bank. Oh, here's another coin. I don't like its snout. That's one very suspicious looking pig. Are you positive your money's safe with her? Don't worry. Whatever I put into my bank here is not getting back out. This piggy bank won't give up a cent. You greedy piggy! Come on, Nolik. Simka must have taught you about how banks work. Humans came up with the idea of piggy banks because they wanted a good place to save their coins. For storing lots of money, people use a safe, a large metal box with a very strong lock. Now that kind of piggy bank's almost impossible to break open. The biggest safes are in banks. Banks use them to store their customers' money and other valuables. There are even safes in banks that are whole rooms. You'd need an awful lot of change to fill up one of these piggy banks. So why are you saving up all this money? For roller skates. How much more do you need to save? I don't know. I can't see if there's enough in there. Then just go and open it. But there's no way to do that. The only way is to smash it real hard. So smash it. Nyeh, -uh, forget it. I have nothing to put my money into. But what if there's already enough for roller skates? And what if there's not? All right, then I guess I'll count your money for you. Tidish! Oh, whoa! Tom Thomas, you've got a fortune in here! There are many different kinds of money, and they're not just coins, either. Long ago, people paid each other with shells, and squirrel skins, and even parrot feathers. And, of course, metal coins are more convenient than any of those things. And paper money is even more convenient than coins. One piece of paper can be worth as much as a hundred coins, or even a thousand. All that needs to be done is to print more zeros on it, and that's all. Today, humans can pay for almost anything without paper money or coins whatsoever. If you have enough money in the bank, 
you can just walk into a store, give the cashier your bank card, and take your purchase home with you without handing over any money. The bank knows how much money you spend, and they pay the store for you later. It's so convenient. So, will you count them? Here we go. One coin! And two coins! Wait, Nolik, what one coin, two coins? What are you counting? You have to add together all of the different numbers. Huh. You should have told me that before. Uh, I never learned how to. Yeah, that's what I figured. Come on out. What can I do? What if you try stacking the coins so they're like stairs? That's what I'm already doing! Why don't you try tilting the piggy bank over? Hang on. Stop! I'm getting buried! Put it back the way it was before! This is worse! Ah! Just put the pig down! No, like, hang in there, please. I'll get some thread and lower it down to you. What? Just smash your piggy bank. But I like it. And what, you don't like me? Of course I like you. Well, who do you like more? You're my friend, aren't you? Of course. Then smash the piggy bank, will you? Okay, Nolik, I'm gonna do it. Are you okay? I'm okay. <sighs> Thank you, Tom Thomas. Thank you, my friend. No problem. At least now you can count up how much money you have. Nah, there's no reason to do it. There's no way it's enough for roller skates. You sure? What a shame. But now you've got all of this money here to buy a piggy bank that's totally brand new. 